How to get better print surface quality by reducing vertical fine artifacts. That's my topic today. To find out what really works best, I test it against each other. The original stepper motor that came with my Sidewinder against a self-made gearing reduction 3 to 1 belt driven that whole module against a ready to buy metal gearing stepper motor also reduction 3 to 1 and that again against a high resolution stepper motor with 0.9 degree full step resolution wow in conclusion, the self-made belt reduction as well as the high-resolution stepper motor delivered far better surface quality than the original stepper motors. That's a lot of stuff to test. <laughs> okay, let's start. Searching online about vertical fine artifacts, I discovered that this problem seems to be widely common amongst different brands and manufacturers of 3D printers. To solve this, some users suggested to use a 0.9 degree stepper motor with higher resolution. Other users were trying to tune up their motor drivers concerning the micro stepping. For an example, here is one of my own prints printed in very shiny PETG and you will see this fine vertical artifacts. Well, they just occur on straight plane surfaces, on geometrical prints. And this is not the so-called ringing effect. Ringing you will only find when the print head is trying to accelerate, uh, especially after sharp corners. But this is not what I'm talking about here, because these vertical artifacts, they are right in the middle and all across very straight and flat surfaces. The nozzle here should just travel in a very straight line on one axis. So I have no idea why this little artifacts should appear here at all. Here is another example. So, let's take a close look. What do we see here? Well, this looks like very perfect surface. There are no vertical fine artifacts to see. Well, this material here is PLA, which I used. And of course, it's not that shiny as the PETG. Anyway, I want to find out why I have this very different behavior on the very same printer. Well, using different materials, using different speeds, but there must be a reason and there must be a solution how to get rid of those vertical fine artifacts. Also when printing PETG. Here at Prusa Printers Org, I found a nice little calculating tool that helped me to understand my belt driven system. What kind of stepper motor do we use originally? Well, in most cases on our hobby printers, it's a 1.8 degree stepper motor and that comes up to 200 full steps per revolution. Next, we have to choose the belt we use and we want to calculate. And that's most commonly a GT2 belt. Well, that means from one two's middle to the next two's middle, it's exactly two millimeter. And at last, type in the T's of your pulley. In my case, it's a 20 T's pulley. And here's the result. It takes about five full steps to move our belt one millimeter in distance. And that makes a re resolution of 200 microns. That's in millimeter 0 0.2 millimeter. Well, that's horrible. I mean, the finest resolution should be 0.2 millimeter. How comes that we can print fine parts then? Well, the whole calculation here is not quite right. Because we didn't calculate for micro stepping. Let's do a correct calculation with micro stepping. 
So driver micro stepping. Open that window here and I calculated so far in full steps. But in reality, our system is using a 1 16th micro stepping mode. And we check that here. Voila. And we'll see that now it will take about 80 electrical steps to move the belt one millimeter in distance. At the same time, we get a very nice nozzle positioning high resolution of 12.5 microns. That's equal to 0 0.0125 millimeters. And that's, that's high. In theory, microstepping is available up to 1 256 microsteps. But this is impractical because the motor is losing holding force at that point, which we don't want to lose. For us, the best compromise between holding force and accuracy of a fine resolution is to use 1 16th microstepping. That left me with even more questions. Checking with a caliper those repeating patterns of that vertical fine artifacts, it showed me that is about 0 0.5, 0 0.7 millimeters of distance. Therefore, it doesn't seem to make any sense to assume that those micro steppings here with high resolution can cause those vertical fine artifacts on my prints. If our standard 1.8 degree stepper motors with 16 micro steppings activated is not the cause for this vertical fine artifacts, what is it then? Could the extruder itself, while pushing forward the filament with micro steppings as well, be the cause for this repeating patterns? The answer is no. The extruder is not the cause for those artifacts because those artifacts are vertical, as the name says. So, in case we would have a changing geometry of the print parts, then with every layer, those artifacts also would shift and we would never get those straight vertical artifacts. So, by logic, the extruder cannot be the cause for those vertical fine artifacts. It comes back to the motor unit in combination with the belt driven system here. Of course, we do have quite some moving masses. To move this pretty heavy direct extruder back and forth here, as well as the pretty heavy bed on the Y axis, that's a pretty tough job that those two belts have to accomplish here. Those reinforced rubber belts, of course, also have an effect on our print surface. And I assume that's a bad effect that they have. They don't need any maintenance, they are cheap, and that's why they are commonly widely used. In general, our flexible belt material can either absorb vibrations or, and that's the bad point, can also multiply them and lead us to resonance. Therefore, I played a little around with the belt tensioning and from very, very tense to medium. To loosen the belts that much doesn't make any sense either because it will cause other problems in the whole system. I could not observe any major changes concerning the vertical fine artifacts, whether I would uh, run the system on a medium tensioned belt or a higher tensioned belt. So that seems to make not much of a difference concerning the resonance. But changing the print speed itself made a difference. While printing in 20, 40 or 60 millimeters per second, the resonance pattern changed clearly. Here an experiment on how to move our stepper motor step by step forward using a little 9 volt battery block. 
in order to move our stepper motor clockwise forward I have to address one after another the two coil circuits and change the polarity in between. One full step equals one fourth of a tooth. The moving rotor has 50 teeth and one step moves the rotor one fourth of a teeth altogether that makes 200 full steps per revolution. Here a higher resolution 0.9 degree stepper motor. What's the difference? The difference are not the coils, because the 1.8 degree motor as well as the 0.9 degree motor both have 8 coils. And 4 coils are connected to one coil circuit. So each motor has exactly 2 coil circuits. The difference here is the rotor itself. Before we have seen the rotor with 50 T's and here we have 100 T's. This adds up to 100 T's multiplied by 4 steps to move from one tooth to another tooth. That gives us 400 steps per revolution. Full steps per revolution. Now it gets crazy. One full step is even divided by 16 micro steps. And uh, that's done by changing the current in a ladder stepping kind of way. So that the current is changing and the magnetic field is changing. One is lowering a little bit, the other magnetic field is hiring a little bit and that gives this micro stepping there in between. It's just crazy. So just to try out what kind of effect a reduction would have on the resonance that we talked about, I was thinking of building myself a gear reduction here, 3, 2, 1. And I was doing it using a belt. Why? Because the belt is cheap, the pulleys are cheap and uh, it works just fine. So it should be a very compact design, so that's why I came up with this design here. To get that compact design I bought myself a cheap second stepper motor for about $12, threw that rotor out because I couldn't get loose the axis in here, so bought myself a second spare axis, put the pulleys on and ready I was. Of course the gear now caused the motor to turn the wrong way, the wrong direction, so but that's very easy to do. I mean you could change very difficult the marlin, you can change a lot of settings within the printer, it's everything fine, but the easiest way for me here was just to take out two of those pins from the four wires here and exchange two of them and uh, just that the motor would spin in the other direction. Last thing to do before I can use this new motor drive module is to change the steps per millimeter. Before we had 80 steps per millimeter stored within the EEPROM and I would change that now to 8 times 3, that means 240 steps per millimeter. Uh, within the Sidewinder X1 with the new firmware upgrade of Digint TFT touch software, it is very easy and comfortable to do. You just enter the menu and you uh, go to the parameters and um, exchange there the 80 steps per millimeter to 240 and store it again. It's done within a couple of seconds. My own design is nice and compact but still it's too large so that I cannot integrate it as it is within the Sidewinder X1 on the Y-axis because there's simply not enough space. So let's see what alternative there is. This is a ready to buy metal gearing stepper motor 321 that I bought 
Look how tiny this is. This is the original stepper motor and the height is about 40 millimeter and you can exchange this as it is because it's also not more than 40 millimeters in height. The stepper motor itself is a lot smaller than the original so it will have a lot less power of course but due to the gearing 3 to 1 you will increase the output power by factor 3 so at the end I think it's uh, the same result. Let's open this little piece. Well, we see that metal gearing here and it's beautiful manufactured. Looks very clean and very nice. This little gearing here is not screwed on. I think it's press fitted on because it's so tiny. And also here we can see this little metal gearing and the second ball bearing inside. From all my testing, I've chosen two parts to show the effect and the result. Two square shaped parts were printed. And as you can see here on the right side, this is printed with gearing three to one. And you see that the surface is quite smooth there on different speed prints, 20, 40, 60 millimeters per second. It's printed with three walls because I thought this would be the most realistic compared surfaces to each other. And we see here the part and this micro artifacts here. This is printed in the original Sidewinder setup. Those fine artifacts would be visible, most visible, with a 40 millimeters per second print speed. Looking here to the print on the right side, you see that the surface is much smoother. In fact, with a 20 and 40 millimeters per second print speed, there is almost no resonance anymore visible. The print here on the right side was printed with my own designed gearing reduction but it looks identical as if I would use the high resolution 0.9 degree stepper motors. I tested them against each other and it looked exactly the same. So that's the result I like. At the same time, I was testing the corner function of linear advanced. It's called here LA, K factor 0.1. That's why you see in the upper picture here that the corners are a little bulgy or not because while printing, I was changing the setup and uh, did a little testing on that as well. I am happy with the result. Because without changing any Marlin settings, without changing any micro steppings, I was able to do it simply mechanical with this reduction. What is my final conclusion today? As much as I like to see my own belt reduction design in work, I have to admit that this little 0.9 degree stepper motor did the same job. So there is no difference in surface quality visible between my own design and this ready to buy 0.9 degree high resolution $15 stepper motor. 
This high resolution stepper motor I tested here has a length of 48 mm. So that means that I can use it here right on the X axis as well as on the Y axis because that fits into the housing here from the Sidewinder X1, X2, Genius, Genius Pro, you name it. Congratulations, you made it through the video even if you skipped a little bit due to my monotonic voice or the background music whatsoever. Uh, anyhow, I hope you find something interesting within this topic and hope you are experimenting by yourself and uh, I'm eager to see your comments. Till the next video, bye bye.